Okay, hi there, and welcome to another essay plan for microeconomics. Uh, I've been thinking about the relationships between transport economics and environmental economics, all linked in with uh, government intervention and market failure, and considering which topics might be likely to appear in 2019. And I think the market for electric vehicles, both in the UK and, and in other countries, is a really good candidate. Uh, we'll go through an essay plan together on this question. The UK government has, uh, is really keen uh, that take-up of electric vehicles increases in the years to come. Electric vehicles are uh, vehicles that use electric motors to drive their wheels. They derive some or all of their power from very large rechargeable batteries. The range is the distance a vehicle can drive between recharges. There are pure electric vehicles that are also plug-in hybrids which can switch between running on electricity or fossil fuels and hybrids which don't plug in. The Toyota Prius is a popular model which has a smaller battery but which charges whilst you're driving. Now the key point. The UK government has announced that all new cars registered from 2040, that date may have come forward in fact, uh, should have electric or hybrid engines by banning petrol and diesel engines from that date. So what question to ask? Let's work through a 25 marker uh, again, thinking about the structure of an answer and how, how to build analysis and strong evaluation. Here's my question. Assess the argument that the UK government is justified in offering financial support to households and businesses wanting to, to purchase electric vehicles. Uh, the bit, bit of backstory is provided in the tax there that the UK government is offering or has been offering a grant effectively direct subsidy to consumers of between £2,500 and £4,500 for people buying a new electric car, depends on the model, and up to £8,000 on the cost of buying a new electric van. So here we go. Let's think about how we build our answer to this question. The key to a really good essay, especially given the time constraint that everybody is under in the paper, is to build analysis, contextualised analysis first, then evaluate the point you've made, go again, do it twice, and then come to a final conclusion. That's what we'll do in this essay. Here we go. My first point is that a subsidy could be justified because it can help to meet the UK's climate change targets. So here's my point. One argument supporting direct subsidies to consumers and firms is that they emit less carbon and NO2 into the atmosphere. These emissions are negative externalities from consumption and production which leads to, little connective word there, can lead to higher external costs and causes chronic health issues. If electric vehicles are less polluting, then subsidies will increase market demand as consumers substitute away from petrol and diesel cars. So you're going to create a substitution effect by changing the relative price of electric versus conventional cars. As a result, over time, there will be improved net social welfare, as shown in my analysis diagram, which we'll come to in a second. Leave a couple of lines. Always leave a couple of lines. The examiner can take a pause. You can take a pause. They can think about the level of response that you've produced in the answer. Then build your evaluation. And uh, my point here is that, yes, in theory, a car, uh, electric car is, is uh, less polluting. But the fact that a car runs on... Electricity doesn't necessarily make it more environmentally friendly. It depends on, great evaluation phrase, it depends on the sources from which electricity to charge the vehicle comes. Okay, more electricity is from renewable sources, but some is from coal, some is from gas-fired power stations. And the linked point is the idea of the, the environmental effect of car batteries. Car batteries essentially use lithium-ion batteries, so that should be batteries, <laughs> change that. Uh, and they use rare earths to produce them. Each tonne of rare earth extracted and processed creates toxic waste, which is another negative externality from production. So that's my valuation point to the first one. Challenging the idea that electric cars are necessarily greener um, than we think. Leave a couple of lines, my second point need to build another argument to justify financial support while well, offering a direct subsidy. Again, go back to the question at the start of the paragraph. Offering a direct subsidy to buyers is a policy designed to achieve a rapid, fast growth 
in market demand so that electric vehicles and hybrids take an increase in market share. This will lead to internal economies of scale, good theme three stuff, which then brings about improvements in productive and dynamic efficiency amongst manufacturers. Improved efficiency and the gains from scale help to lower prices and, uh, well, okay, and encourage and also encourage further investment in the industry. And so my argument here is that with the economies of scale, you'll get cheaper electric cars, but you'll also get cheaper electric buses, electric taxis, and it's that which could be really useful for low-income families that would make transport more affordable, clean transport more affordable for, for families on on squeezed incomes. However, doubts challenge the idea. Yes, we're going we're to increase demand for um, these cars, these vehicles. We're going to achieve scale in the industry. But can the supply side of the industry cope? Are there limits to the supply side capacity of the industry? So a counter argument is that offering generous financial support might run up against supply constraints. Can the power station system come up with enough peak time um, demand when drivers are charging their vehicles? Are there enough charging stations in towns and cities to cope with increased demand? Who should operate the charging stations? Who should profit from them? Uh, direct subsidy, of course, if it's successful, will be expensive for the government. And also it's going to bring down the tax revenues that they've come to rely on for many years from conventional petrol and diesel cars. So there could be a trade-off there between increasing use of environmental friendly cars, electric vehicles, and the tax revenue going to the government. There we go, building two points. Um, now the final conclusion, I'll come to the analysis diagrams in just a second. What I've done in this essay plan is I've written a slightly longer conclusion. Some examples require you to build a lengthier conclusion, looking at the arguments and calibrating and coming to a value judgment. Other exam boards are happy with a slightly shorter conclusion. Here's my, here's my go at the question. Economists are often wary of the use of subsidy because it can distort price signals and the operation of the price mechanism. In some countries, generous subsidies for vehicles, electric vehicles, have been associated with high, high levels of fraud, which will be a clear example of government failure. But on balance, I would argue that. I love that, that phrase towards the end. On balance, I would argue that the economic and the social benefits of such a subsidy outweigh the risks in the long run. UK is planning to ban the sale of new petrol and diesel cars, so offering an incentive now to switch can allow this process to be pushed forward. And there are knock-on effects. Subsidies uh, can lead to large-scale jobs being created in driving, selling, financing, servicing and charging of these vehicles. Most of all, uh, we're getting an increasing percentage of our energy from renewable sources, so some of those worries about the batteries and things and, and coal-powered fire stations may be, may be reduced. Crucially, as battery technologies improve and more and more households can source their own energy from off-grid solar power, then the unit cost and prices of vehicles will fall, which, in the medium term, may mean that the government subsidy isn't needed. It's a little bit like saying at the moment that the solar panel industry, the solar farms, are becoming so big that the unit cost of solar power has fallen dramatically in the last couple of years, such that we're now starting to get solar panel, solar power farms, which are subsidy free, which hasn't happened for for some time. However, at the moment, electric vehicles are not affordable for most families, which raises the issue that the direct subsidy is actually inequitable in favour of better off households, some of whom would have bought these cars anyway. Another possible source of government failure. Can you see what I'm trying to do here? It's a slightly longer conclusion. Uh, I'm not going to be coming to a definite conclusion, but I'm just trying to calibrate and think about the balance of arguments as we go through. I've chosen electric vehicles because I think this is a topic ahead of the 2019 papers that is really topical. Big news, and lots of countries are trying to fast forward and kickstart their electric vehicle sectors. So many micro concepts can be used. It'd be a perfect question for a micro paper. Elasticity demand, externalities, demand for labour, economies of scale, efficiency, monopoly power, everything really in this, uh, in this question. What about the diagrams? Well, if you believe that electric vehicles uh, are a cleaner form of transport, 
you might want to show a positive externalities diagram, which I've put on the board for you here, showing the social benefit lying above the private benefit and the need for some form of subsidy to increase demand to shift you towards an output level Q2 rather than an output level Q1. Equally, if you wanted to emphasise perhaps the environmental cost of batteries and extraction of, of you know, lithium and, and uh, rare earths from the, from the ground and the pollution that causes, you might well want to focus on some of the negative externalities in the production of the batteries, in which case you could draw a negative externalities diagram to support your argument. You know, you choose which diagrams you use. As long as it's relevant, you'll get some credit. Notice here on the x-axis, I'm actually making it clear which market this refers to, the output of lithium-ion batteries. On the previous diagram, quantity, output of electric vehicles. So do make your diagrams contextual if you can. Not always easy in the exam when the pressure's on. Uh, lots of data at the moment on electric cars. Um, lots of businesses announcing they're going to ramp up production. Ford, for example is hoping to produce 40 electrified vehicles by 2022. 16 fully electric, the rest will be the, the plug-in hybrids. What's stopping people from buying a car at the moment? It's mainly cost. And it's mainly the fear that uh, you run out of charge before you get to your destination. Uh, what's clear though is battery prices are falling and they're falling very quickly. So a terrific possible example of economies of scale. You could draw a diagram for that. This is the, the average price of battery packs. And uh, it's, a, it's a factor affecting demand. It's a complementary demand, isn't it? Uh, which countries are ahead in the charge towards electric vehicles? The biggest market, of course, is China. The answer always is China. United States, second. Well, again, that's the size of the market. But look at Norway. Measured as a percentage of passenger car sales. In fact, the figure is now over 50% of new car sales in Norway are electric vehicles. And the extent to which electric cars have been encouraged in Norway is pretty remarkable. There's no VAT on electric cars, very low tax, road tax. They're offering free charging points, um, free travel on toll, ro toll roads. The Norwegians are going for electric vehicles in a big way compared to little old UK where electric vehicles are less than 3% of the total. In Austria, you can drive more quickly. The speed limits go up if you buy an electric car. A little behavioural nudge to think about. Well, there we go. Uh, hopefully, this is an interesting market for you to study and revise. Lots of potential exam questions. This could be a data response question instead of a, instead of a chunky essay. Anyway, thank you for joining in this essay plan on the market for electric vehicles.